Insane Asylum! Tonight we have a crazy contest of insanity and future twisted nonsense. I am your host, Rufino Rivera, and I got on the line two other wrestling fans, because we are talking WrestleMania 29. That's right, folks. This shit's about to get strange. Uh, very strange, because we're talking WrestleMania 29, but we don't know what's really going on for WrestleMania 29, per se. But I'm not alone again. Tonight, I'm here doing group therapy with two wrestling fans themselves. First and foremost, back for a fourth time. Technically fifth time, because shit just does not want to go right for me anymore. Xavier, what's up? What's up, brother? Ooh, yeah, dig it. And then next, he's back technically for a fourth time, too. Uh, Vinny, what's up, man? <laughs> what's up, guys? All right, so recording's working. Shit's going right for right now. We're good. Let's pray nothing impedes this, okay? So we're talking WrestleMania 29. Uh, we're gonna let's hit WrestleMania itself before we start getting into our personal WrestleManias. Let's let's get to the big topics right off the bat. There's like four matches that have been somewhat confirmed. Two of them definitely confirmed. Two of them I'm not entirely sure on. Uh, but let's talk about one of the top two matches at this point. CM Punk versus Undertaker. Now, Xavier, I've got to ask you, what are your thoughts on this particular match? This match will probably be going okay, because you got to remember, like, Undertaker has been in the ring for, like, a year. And how the some photos coming up, like, he's not in the, his best shape, too. Okay. So, don't forget, I, though, this motherfucker is also on a Legends contract. That's right, too. And then also, I just know, like, he had a lot of surgeries during his time off, so I don't know how it's going to go, but I know how CM Punk is. CM Punk will probably carry the match like he usually does for everyone else. <laughs> right. Well, don't forget. But but I, I'm thinking, like, just how Shawn Michaels is, like, when it comes down to WrestleMania, I think Undertaker will, you know... Shine. Get, the, get the adrenaline kick in and, you know, do what he does. Right, right. Uh, Vinny, what about your thoughts? It's been the most predictable match since January. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I can't argue with that one. That shit is completely true. We all saw it coming. Yeah. I mean, look, let's face facts, okay? Undertaker versus CM Punk, we knew it was going to happen. Look back at some of the matches that they've done before when they were both on SmackDown. They were pretty good matches. Can't lie. But this wasn't WrestleMania, so Undertaker didn't put in his all. This is the one day of the year. Yes, Undertaker comes back. He probably wrestled two or three matches before to kind of get the – to shake the rust off. But Taker, when it comes to WrestleMania, that's his day. Now, we all pretty much know there's a slight inkling that, you know, Taker may lose this. Doubt it. Uh, but we all know for a fact that ultimately Taker comes out of this as the victor. Is it me, or is it kind of too predictable? It's just getting old at this point. Okay. Well, personally for me, because now it's like 20 years we see Undertaker beat every single person each year, and, you know, when the match, you know, starts, I'm like, you know what's going to happen. Someone's going to try and do the finishing move. Undertaker's going to reverse it or hit him with the tombstone, and boom, that's it. Well, you, 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 the thing is, though, if we go back two years, WrestleMania 27, Taker had the hell beat out of him by Triple H. And I don't think anybody here amongst the three of us can say that, can argue this. That was the closest we had ever seen Taker come to losing a WrestleMania. Not even the uh, Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels one? No. Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels one? Yeah, that was. That was, a, that was a close call because Taker was even like, you know, for fuck's sake, just stop already. But Taker was able to walk away from the match. The way how they ended the match in WrestleMania 26, however, or I'm sorry, uh, WrestleMania 27, was Taker couldn't leave the ring of his own will. You know, they played that angle. And that made that definitely set up for a match a year later, without a doubt. And that's something that no one was really expecting. No one expected Taker to be beaten up to the point where he couldn't get out of the ring himself. So, to me, that was good storytelling. That went old school 
with telling a story in the ring versus constantly cutting promos left and right. Um, but, I mean, I think we all know, you know, CM Punk's losing this match. We can all accept that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ultimately, though, I think they're going to put on a, a pretty decent show. Taker, I think there's only been, like, two WrestleManias where Taker's kind of, like, washed out during a match. I don't think this year is going to be that year because I think this may be, if not this year, what next year will be the last time we see Undertaker in the ring. I think next year he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's going to wrestle his final match at WrestleMania, go 22-0, and and that's it. Thoughts? He should have retired at 20. I agree with that, but I think they wanted to kind of solidify it a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know why, I, but... Yeah, I agree too, but I think he might go a little bit longer than 22. If he goes to 25, I'd be completely stunned. That's what I was thinking, like most 25. If if he goes 25, I'd be, look, if he goes 21 and 0, cool. If he goes 22 and 0, great. If he goes 25 and 0, my jaw will hit the floor. I'll be a happy camper, but my jaw will hit the floor. Um, And now we have to talk about the obvious, you know, elephant in the fucking room. Rock versus John Cena. Never before, never again, turned into, it's happening again, folks. And this time the title's on the line. Oh shit! I am so not interested in this match. Right, you guys. <laughs> yeah. <Pee> break. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw this coming since last WrestleMania. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah, I mean, look, I like the Rock. I like the old Rock. I like the. Uh, I, like, I don't remember that. I I, I like the the you know. 96 to 2002 Rock, you know, who came out and he just, like, said some of the most off-the-wall shit, and his matches were classic, especially him versus Austin. Classic match. But, now you've got this new Rock versus John Cena? (laughs) Alright, look. I give John Cena credit where credit is due. This is one of the hardest working men in the WWE. What the fuck is he doing in the main event again? (laughs) <laughs> I don't even know. Somebody yeah. just can somebody please just put him on the sidelines for the next year so we can forget about him for a little bit. He makes too much. Him the, yeah, even if you put him on the sideline, he comes back fast. I, I noticed. Yeah, like he breaks. He he ruptures a disc in his neck because he takes a power bomb from Batista, and then like six months later, he's back. Like that Tuesday, I'll never forget that that whole thing. Like he went into surgery that Tuesday from that surgery uh, from that incident, and he was walking the same day. The same day he was like, "I feel so much better. You know, I can walk. I can move my I can move my arms and legs, and I'm gonna go ahead and let this rest up a bit." Then he had his pec injury, where you know he tore his pec clean off the bone, and then you know six months after that, shows up at Royal Rumble and wins the fucking Royal Rumble. It's like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? Like, John Cena, I, look, credit where credit is due. Hardest working man, fast healer, and he does take care of himself. Credit where most boring fucking wrestler ever. I would rather see, like, you know, a, put a couple of new kids in that fucking position, please. Next year, WrestleMania main events, Yoshitatsu versus John Cena. <laughs> no, no, next year's, next year's WrestleMania is going to be uh, Yoshi Tatsu versus Zack Ryder for the internet championship. <laughs> because that's where it's pretty much running to. I mean, look, I give credit it, it, I give credit for WWE trying to make some kind of splash in the wrestling world, but, you know, we've seen it all. It's time to change things up. Now, I have to ask this about both of you. Vinny, I'll ask you first. Do you think it's time for the PG rating to just disappear? No, because look at when the Attitude Era just first started. It was PG. It's just that the creative team sucks now. Okay. Well, then again, Freddie Prince Jr. is on it. Or was on it. I don't care how much you say. I don't care how much he says he's a wrestling fan. He's... Eh, no. The number one The number one uh, requirement to be WWE's creative VP is to not know anything about wrestling. That is just brilliant to hear. Zavi, <laughs> your thoughts? Um, 
I say keep the PG going. It's, uh, I totally agree with like writers. Can we just go back to the old ways where wrestlers actually write their own promos? That would be nice, but the thing is, you know, they wrestlers have a tendency to be potty mouth. I should know because I, I when I went for my tryout at CZW, fucks were just thrown everywhere. Like, what the fuck are you doing, you fucking fuck? Get the well, fuck on that fucking wall right fucking now. It's CZW, man. That, yeah. it, dude, it doesn't matter because when I went down to the uh, to the Monster Factory, same way. I, Mike Sharp was the same way. What the fuck are you doing, you fucking fuck? Get the fuck up on that fucking wall right fucking now, you fucking piece of fucking shit. Like, wow, I, I would have never thought that professional wrestlers would have been so damn vulgar. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, you know, I mean, to let the wrestlers write their own promos, it would seem a little more natural. You know, just the way how I see it, and maybe you guys can agree with this, give them an outline. It's like, these are the marks you have to hit. You have to hit that, you know, you're starting a feud with this person. You At some point, you have to hit the mark where you mention that you were this champion or they're this champion. And then you hit the final mark, which is, you know, this person wins the, the, the rubber match between these two over a certain amount of time. And this one person wins the feud, and they either go stay face or they go heel or they go, you know, they go face or stay heel or whatever. I think it should be point A, point B, point C. You fill in the blank. That would be awesome. Am I crazy? I mean, can it, 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 does it sound crazy, Zavi? No, it doesn't sound crazy at all. Okay, because, I, I mean, some people would say, yeah, that's a great idea. Other people would be like, well, that's illogical. It's like, well, fuck you too, Spock. I mean, I just think it would make more sense if you gave the wrestlers a little more, a lot more creative control. Maybe then you would be able to tell which wrestlers have a knack for this shit and which wrestlers are only good for wrestling, which wrestlers are only good for Mike, things like that. Um, yeah, if they're not good on the mic, just go back to the old ways, just get a manager. Right, and let them be your mouthpiece. Yeah. I agree with like, that. Bobby Brahe, how many wrestlers he had, Jeez. and a lot of the times he was the one who was cutting the promos. You're right. I mean, God forbid we have another Ultimate Warrior. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. This is a guy who just starts rambling on about random shit. And then the things from the skies come down and immerse itself in the energy that is the world that we live in. And it explodes into a fiery cosmic destruction of chaos, superseded by the power of a magnum gun times the body of a living human square. And then Albert Einstein comes out and takes a shit on your grave because he ate tacos that morning and he fucking rode a unicorn. And that's why you will be beaten by the ultimate warrior. Did I still remember that promo he did for Hulk Hogan about a plane crash? Yeah! <laughs> that was the most weird promo I've ever heard in my life. I think every single wrestling fan must be scratching their head and went, What? Like, what the fuck is he talking about? I mean, I can't, I can't remember it too well. Like, he was talking about Hulk Hogan being in a plane crash, or he was comparing Hulk Hogan to a plane crash. It was one I of the two, was something about a plane crash. <laughs> it's just the fact that he was like, Hogan and plane crash. It's like, wait. What? Yeah. The fuck is wrong with? Hey, dude, really? Are you, are you okay? The drugs are still kicking in. Obviously. Why don't you tone down a bit? No, I just did thirteen lines off the back of a hooker's back. Is that the why he snores a lot with the cocaine? But <laughs> <laughs> probably. It's trying to trying to get every little bat, every little last grain up his nostril so he can get that fucking hit. Um, there was another match that was uh kind of confirmed. It's the Shield versus. Uh, Orton, Sheamus, and Ryback. Um, doesn't Ryback have that whole thing with Mark Henry? Yeah. So why in the fuck would he be in this match against the Shield? It's WWE. Doesn't make any sense. There's continuity issues, people. Where the fucking plot hole? Zavi, what do you think about that fucking confusion? Uh, it's not going to be a confusion, trust me, because probably within a week or two or last minute, they're going to make that Mark Henry versus Ryback match and then replace him with Big Show. It's the only thing that makes sense, because the last person who was attacked on Raw by the Shield was fucking Big Show. He took a knee to the side of the dome. He took a triple powerbomb. Yes! No, wait, it was Orton who took a knee to the side of the dome, and it was, yeah, uh, Big Show who took the, the triple powerbomb. What the fuck? I mean, why would you say, okay, yeah, you know, the Shield just got back at Big Show, but instead of having Big Show, we're going to put Ryback in. It's so, he always do stuff last minute. 
fucking pointless. Uh, and, and there was another match, uh, the tag team match. Team Hell No versus Ziggler and Big E Langston. Okay, first and foremost, does anybody see Big E and fucking Ziggler becoming tag team champions? I hope not. Well, I hope not either, but the rumors are stating that they're supposed to lose the title, so Brian and Kane can fight against each other. I hope, like, that match does not happen because I really hope that Ziggler cashes in, and I'm quoting that, at WrestleMania, Mm -hmm. instead of this tag team match. Yeah, I hope so, too. See, that's the thing that I'm worried about. He's held on to this box for the past year, okay? He's entitled to use it any point up until WrestleMania. Who would he cash it in on? He only can cash it in on the World Heavyweight Champion. So he's going to cash it in on either Del Rio or uh, Swagger. Swagger? Are you uh, ew, 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 nasty. Like anybody wants to see him be champion on SmackDown. He's he's more raw material anyway. Ew, that's fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Fucking pointless. By the way, uh, for WWE, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to plug something. The history of the WWE Championship and the history of the World Heavyweight Championship can be found at your local Walmart for twenty nine ninety six. Hey, um, actually, I want to do a little plug myself by by WWE. Okay, because they just re release the the first. I think 15 WrestleManias and individual DVDs. Yeah. And, and I believe they also put the word WWF back in the video. Cool. And now, see, that's that's some credibility. So you know what that means. WrestleMania 3 is going to sell out. Yeah. And um, and the pricing around 15 bucks a DVD at uh, Amazon. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, – Walmart is going to end up having a whole bunch of them too because I saw a whole. There's a whole spot dedicated to WWE DVDs at Walmart. I'm telling you right now. I'll see you tomorrow then. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now we've got these four matches, and the question is: Is really WWE pull, are they really taking their time when it comes to trying trying to come up with a match for WrestleMania? Because I mean. Usually at this point, we would know every match on the card. Yeah, because usually they trying to plan WrestleMania around, like, right after Survivor Series. Right. Trying to figure out, like, okay, let's see who we want to put together and who to work with and whatnot. And just remember that the, the after Survivor Series, we just know that, you know, Punk was going to take on Undertaker and John Cena was going to take on The Rock. Right. And that was about it. Yeah, but we had nothing else. There was no, there's like no other matches to build up to. I mean, you've got the IC title on the line at some point. I'm pretty certain Jericho in, is going to go for that IC title belt. They kind of alluded to it. Um, you know, I don't. It, it could be a triple threat match again. You know, uh, there could be. There's the whole United States title thing. Uh, Cesaro's got no real beef with anybody at this point. He's not really showing any real like feud with anyone. I, I I have this funny feeling, and I know I, I shouldn't be saying this because I really want to go to WrestleMania, but at the same time, I got this funny feeling WrestleMania is going to blow this year. Definitely. Yeah. And that makes me question whether or not I, if I really want to go to Mania, because if it's going to blow, I don't want to be there. Like, I, don't get me wrong, WrestleMania, I understand, it's a feel, it's a it's a thing, but at the same time, it's like... If it blows, what's the point? Just go to the Hall of Fame. That, yeah, but isn't the Hall of Fame in New York? Yes, yeah, in uh, Madison Square Garden. Right. Now, you're going to have a Hall of Fame, which is probably going to be you know, the, the best part of all that. And then you go to Romania, and as Vinny said, possibly be a part of the world's largest Harlem Shake. Horrible. <laughs> Are you serious? Are they trying to do a Harlem Shake there? Vinny, you want to you talk about that? Uh, there were just a few rumors going around about it. I, got it. I still remember that one rumor that they wanted to break a world record for uh, most people wearing, uh, like, a mask. Right, because they wanted Rey Mysterio versus Sin Cara. Yeah, uh, yeah, and plus, like, that was the reason why King put the mask back on, too. Right, and what happened there? Nothing. Nothing. There wasn't even a mention of it. 
It's like, ah, another fucking idea falling flat because we didn't bother to tell anybody about it. But uh, now that we talked about that, we we should start talking about things that really matter to us. Um, here's here's a question that I think uh, is a fair question to ask. Um, if you could go back in history, out of all the WrestleManias that you've ever watched, with the exclusion of WrestleMania 3's uh, Steamboat versus uh, Macho Man match, take two of your favorite matches and put them into this year's WrestleMania. Who would they be? Who, what would the matches be? And where would you put them on your card? So uh, we'll start off with you, Vinny. Who would be your top two WrestleMania matches that you would want to see from previous WrestleManias in this year's WrestleMania? Um, Rock versus Austin from WrestleMania 17. Fucking awesome match. Nice. And, and um, I guess Taker versus HBK in their first match. At WrestleMania 25. Yeah. That was, dude, that one was a showstopper, legit. Not to mention the camera guy who got fired for saving Undertaker's life. Still some bullshit in my eyes because he dropped the camera. I would rather drop the camera and save a man's life than watch a man die on camera. Is that just me? No. No. Okay, good. Still don't think that the camera guy should have got fired. He saved, look, Vincent. Kennedy McMahon, he saved one of your top superstars from breaking his fucking neck. He did you a favor. Give him his job back. All right. Um, Zombie, what about you? Um, God. Uh, I'll, first one I'll pick is, um, is Shawn Michaels versus uh, Bret Hart, the 60-minute 60 60 minute Iron Man match. That was a fucking good match. Yeah. And the second one, it's almost like a personal for me, okay. but it's an, it's an, uh, another Bret Hart match, but it's Bret versus Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10. That was awesome. Oh, my to God. Me, that, that was that was the reason why I got into wrestling, and plus to me, it was their their storyline was more personal to me. Okay. Because, like, I got into wrestling, and the first person I got into was Owen Hart. Okay. Because, and the storyline was, you know, Bret was always getting the attention. Right. He was popular, whatever, in my personal, my childhood. I have an older brother, and he was just like that, too. Okay. So I, I myself, was extremely related to Owen. Okay. So that's why I picked that match. It's a good match. <laughs> those, yeah, both else? of those matches are fucking good. Um, I'm actually going to uh, nitpick a bit. Because um, I only I, – I would like to have two. My two favorite ones, you know, obviously my favorite one being Steamboat and uh, Macho Man, but since we can't choose that one, I may only be able to go with one, maybe two. And uh, the first one I thought was, uh, it was a legit clinic in technique versus power, and that was Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar. At uh, WrestleMania 19? I, th I believe it was WrestleMania 19. And it was just like, to see a big man go for the risk and take that shooting star press moment in Brock Lesnar, dude, that was ballsy. That was flat out fucking ballsy. The thing is, if you, if you go online, you can actually find this on YouTube. You can look up Brock Lesnar doing a shooting star press on, like, heat. And uh, he pulled it off. Yeah, he also did in uh, OVW, and he did it very well. Yeah. He, it, it's just that night, he just fucking, I think it was because of the jitters and the nerves, he he flinched at the wrong time and botched it. But for a big guy to fly like that, that's fucking impressive. It really was. And uh, I would have to say the second match, call me a, sin, uh, call me a bit of a cynic, call me evil, uh, call me a sinner. <clears throat> it's a Chris Benoit match. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't look. I don't give a fuck. Wait, wait. Is it is it is it a Chris Benoit versus Chris Jericho? No. Is it Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. But here's but understand something. You had two wrestling technicians in the ring. Okay, you had Kurt Angle, 
1996 Olympic gold medalist. Fucking wrestling machine versus the rabbit wolverine, Chris Benoit. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Take away, look, yes, he's been, he will always be stigmatized for the cruel, vicious shit that he may have done. But, at the same time, you cannot take away that when it comes to this man's wrestling prowess, it was bar none. No one was as intense when it came to just wrestling. Yes, he couldn't talk worth the damn. And yes, he was quiet for the most part. But when it came down time to fucking wrestle, he fucking wrestled. Okay, anybody who does a uh, fucking suicide dive and slams into the damn announce table as hard as he did when he went against uh, Booker T and gets up and still finishes the match deserves credit where it's fucking due. And that match that he had against Kurt Angle was a clinic. It was a fucking masterpiece. Don't give a fuck what anyone says. I thought it was an amazing match. But what we're going to do, folks, we're going to take a moment to give you the opportunity to take all this wrestling information to sink in. And then you're gonna do, what you're going to do is you're going to hit that annotation down here at the bottom of the screen. And you're going to go on to part two where myself, Xavier, and Vinny, we're going to talk about our personal WrestleManias. If you had a choice, what would your WrestleMania be? Leave a comment down below. You know, hit like, subscribe, share. Do all that fun stuff. Especially share. You know, become an inmate, join in on the fun. Hit hit that like button. Cause, and, and definitely subscribe. But most importantly, fucking share. And leave your comments letting us know if you could have your WrestleMania, who would you have in it? But for right now, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after these messages. Motherfucker, yeah. there aren't no messages in this bitch. Shut the hell up. Okay. Click the second part. Click the second part. Yeah, go, go ahead and click that annotation. You're going to enjoy it. I promise. 